So as we reflect on uh, what we've been learning about Jacob for the last few weeks, you can remember that uh, Jacob had the dream, and as he had that dream of the ladder going to heaven, uh, he named the place Bethel, which means house of God. And then we knew another story about uh, Jacob when he struggles with a man, an angel, whomever it may be, and with that, he struggled and he called the place Peniel. I want to share with you in this particular scripture and with other scriptures how sometimes early um, translators uh, didn't get it quite correctly. <clears throat> Let me share with you two. The first is if you go to Rome and you go and visit and you see there are tons of statues there of Moses. And you can even see it in pictures, in portraits, paintings. You'll, you'll see that Moses has two horns sticking out of his head. Anybody seen that before? Yeah, you'll see there are two horns sticking out of his head and you think, mercy me, you know, what is this? So early translators took it to be horns when later translators realized the Hebrew means rays of light. So that's just a little, when you see these pictures of, um, or statues of Moses with, and they don't make them very prominent, they're kind of like, they just stick out a little bit, uh, then you'll realize that the interpreter just didn't get it correct. <clears throat> and then I have another one for you that is just going to shatter your faith completely. <laughs> You'll probably never come back to church again. And it's about the story that we heard today with Jacob and Joseph. Early interpreters of the Hebrew interpreted and translated the coat that Jacob called Joke gave Joseph was a colorful coat. And we know that with all of the different things about Joseph in the amazing Technicolor coat. Y'all have seen that? Yeah. So the correct interpretation is a long robe with sleeves. So if your faith is shattered, I'm sorry, but I'm just giving you the truth. I want to lay the truth to you. Um, you know, I can remember when Donny Osmond was the Joseph in the Technicolor coat, and I was, you know, I was very dismayed. In, in the UK, Joseph in the Technicolor coat is one of the longest shows that people come to see. But it's um, a long coat with sleeves. And what that is all about is um, Joseph was favored by Jacob. And so to have a coat with, a long coat with sleeves meant that you didn't have to do any manual work. You were an overseer. You were the one who saw that things were correct. And all his other brothers had to wear working clothes. So you can imagine the enmity that was taking place between Joseph and his brothers. It wasn't over he had a colorful coat, but it was that he was favored, that he was able to have this privilege in his life. And so what happens is we heard from the story today that they uh, sell Joseph and then he's taken off to Egypt. And I'm quite sure that our words for today are, Lord, save me. I'm quite sure that Joseph thought that many times. Next week, we're going to continue in the book of Genesis with this particular story. And we're going to find where the brothers are in a predicament and how they may have said, Lord, save me, and how Joseph takes care of that. So that will be um, for this week and then into next week with Joseph and about horns and a long coat with sleep. So now we're going to go on to Jesus. And I want to share with you an illustration. It, it's just really funny that in, there, there was a prominent New York City church that had a big sign which the pastor 
would post the sermon titles for two weeks in a row. So on one week, the sign read, August 13th, Jesus walks on water. Got it? Jesus walks on water. The next week for August 20th, the title for the sermon is Searching for Jesus. <laughs> you know, poor, I guess, you know, he thought Jesus is going to sink. <laughs> Searching for Jesus when Jesus is walking on water. So I want us to think about this. How many of you get the post or look at the post? Some, all right, very good. Whatever newspaper it may be. Suppose we picked up the Washington Post this morning and read this headline. Jesus appears and walks across the Potomac River. Suppose the story underneath the headline talked about how crowds of Christians had gathered to the shore to watch this miracle unfold before their very eyes. Suppose the story went on to describe how Jesus had called out, Come! And the crowds began to walk on the water. But then the crowds of Christians began to be frightened by the winds that were there. And no longer trusting Jesus, they shouted, Lord, save us! As they would have drowned if Jesus didn't rescue them. Would any of us have exhibited a faith so strong as to keep us from sinking if we were in that same predicament? We are here, after all, not because merely that Jesus can walk on water, but because of our faith in God. Because of our faith in a resurrection of Jesus and a faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Imagine if we were in this same predicament with the disciples and we were called to go out and walk. Would we have faith in Jesus or would we sink? That's why we're here. We as Christians are searching for Jesus. We're searching for the miracle worker who can walk on water, who can heal the sick, who can change water into wine, who can raise people from the dead. We're searching for the Jesus who can work miracles in our lives, transforming despair into hope as we cry out in our lives, Jesus, save us. Lord, save us. Today's gospel lesson comes to us in the story of Jesus walking on water. And Jesus has just performed the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And Jesus is simply worn out. And so he leaves the area and he instructs the disciples to get into their boat and wait for him on the other side. And this leads us to the incredible scene in which Jesus and Peter meet on a windy sea. The disciples set out in their boat and a violent storm arises. And it was a situation of danger that Jesus came to the disciples. There Jesus is walking on the sea. And the disciples see this and they're terrified because they think they are seeing a ghost. But immediately Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, It is I, have no fear. At which point, typically, Peter, the greatest cynic in the world, calls out to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, then bid me to come to you on the water. And what does Jesus say? He says, One, he says come. And Jesus steps out on the boat and walks on the water toward Jesus. But then he felt the wind blowing against him, and Peter's faith turned into fear, and immediately he began to sink, and he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches out his hand and rescues Peter and then says, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus reached out to Peter with a human hand. He reached out to Peter with a human hand just like ours, ones that wash dishes, change diapers, press computer keys, play the piano, paint pictures, drive cars, wrap packages, operate machines, plant flowers. 
But we also know that Jesus' hands were divine hands. That when we say, Lord, save us, Jesus reaches out and brings us out of the pit of despair. Think about some of these biblical stories where Jesus reaches out. The lepers on the side of the road, cast out by their families, abandoned by their friends, nobodies, and alone they cried out in pain. And Jesus comes and reaches out his hand and lifts them up. The blind man struggling down the road in a world of darkness, begging for food to keep him alive for another day. And Jesus walks, and he doesn't walk by, but he stops, and he reaches out his hand and saves him. The man with the demon, a mental illness raging out of control, agonizing his tortured mind. And then Jesus comes and reaches out his hand. The woman taken in adultery, hiding her face on the ground. The crowd ready to pick up stones and to stone her to death. And Jesus reaches out his hand and saves her. The disciples gather in the upper room, hiding behind locked doors. And Jesus just comes and enters the room and reaches out his hand. Think in a more modern day context of people in need as we cry out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches out his hand. A woman addicted to drugs, selling her body to buy more drugs. Her life is going down the tube. And in this despair, she cries out, Jesus, Lord Jesus, save me, help me. And Jesus reaches out. Cancer has become a part of a person's life, wasting the physical body away. Jesus, help me with this cancer in my life. And Jesus reaches out and offers love and care. A job that a person loves so much made it their total life, and they get the call that they're no longer needed for this job. Total loss in their life. And Jesus reaches out his hand. I have one that I wrote in this morning. Parents dropping off their kids for the first time to college. For some it's joy, for some it's sadness. But in that despair or joy, whatever it is, Jesus is there reaching out his hand, offering us love and salvation. A husband, wife, or child that has died and we feel so alone, we become frightened, we become abandoned. We cry out, Jesus, help me, save me. And Jesus reaches out his hand to us. What's going on in our lives today? Each of us has a storm. Each of us feels battered by the winds of reality in this ever-changing world. In the beginning... We feel like the disciples, alone, afraid, drifting, cold, drenched, in the dark. And we cry out, Lord, save me. I call that the shortest prayer in the Bible. And in despair, three words, Lord, save me. In the middle, we have the four words, and then Jesus came. And then in the end, we have where Jesus reaches out his hand as he did to Peter and walks side by side with us. Jesus reached out to Peter and walked Peter along. 
But you know, the best part of the story for me is this. Jesus brought Peter back to the boat. He didn't leave him stranded or take him back to the shore. He took him to the boat and we're told that the storm ceased and they went along their way. Jesus took him back to the boat. In Christian symbolism, you'll see the symbol for the church is many times a boat. That this boat that we know as Doolin Church is a place that we can gather every week, whenever it may be, live person, live streaming, 24-7, whatever. And here in this boat that we call Doolin Church, we can find Jesus and we can experience Jesus' love. We can experience God's love for us, that we are all children and we are all treated the same and we are all welcome and we are all loved. You cannot find that in any other place. But here in this instrument on earth that we know as the church and as we here collectively call Doolin Church. And friends, that's the good news. That when we sink, Jesus not only reaches his hand out to us, but what does he do? He pulls us back into the boat where Jesus is and where the disciples are and where all of us gathered here are here together today. And my friends, for me especially, that's good news. And friends, that's good news for each and every one of us gathered here. In the storms of life, do not give up faith. Do not be a cynic like Peter. But know that Jesus will reach out. And Jesus will bring us back and protect us and love us. Jesus, save me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together, Amen. Amen.